Okay, so now let's put some of that theory into practice. And the first thing we're going to do is uh, I want to show you I have set up the parameter sets slightly different from before. So now I'm using or the parameters as parameter sets, which is slightly different from what we did before. Not very. So I've just created the DB2 parameter set just like before. But then separately, I've created a rejects parameter set and an out parameter set, which really just globbed together what we had seen before. So in the, for example, in the rejects, I had four, and now they're all in one, and one parameter set. And just like out is the same thing, I had four individual parameters that I've you know, globbed together as a single set of those same four. Uh, so you can see them, there you go, out one, two, three, four. Okay. And now what I'm going to do is I want to be sure that in case something in my CSV can't be read, that we don't lose that data. So I'm going to right click, right drag from the CSV file and let go kind of in the middle here. And that will create, it's a little tricky to see, but this is a rejects link now. And you can confirm that by right clicking on the link and then seeing what our other options are. We could convert it to a stream, which we would get an error if we tried to do that and we could also convert it to a reference which we would get an error so there's really only one more kind of link and so by process of elimination that is rejects what we want to do now is drag sequential onto the canvas make sure it links up or connects up there i'm going to rename this in rejects one and i'm going to let's move this guy back down and i'm going to there we go whoop, there we go and i'm going to name this one rejects one okay now it is sometimes a little tricky to get this to line up the way you want so in that case um, you just sort of leave it or reset re, uh, them okay now let's go to the transformer stage this is what the transformer stage looks like it is expecting us to do a kind of mapping so this is somewhat pointless honestly until we get the uh, columns set so if we click on this icon here, we can see the inputs and the outputs. So we have in transformer for the input, and the output is going to be into DB2. All of that looks completely uh, the way you would expect. But essentially what we need to do here is go to DB2, and we need to check its columns. And here, look, there's really nothing in here, so that's, that's not any... That's not very useful. Although we called it DB2, uh, we really it would be much better if we called it party, because that's really what we're going to do now. We're going to insert into party. So let's do that. Party, and where it says in DB2, we're going to rename that. We'll say in party. Now, we're going to go into DB2 now. And now we are going to, let's go through here. Instance, we've already typed all these in or inserted these from before. Uh, this should be just fine. I'm going to just double check so db2 instance now that we're using the parameter sets and db2 database name and the user name and the password there we go and now where it says usage we are indeed going to do an insert and where it says generate sql we're going to leave that as yes so we'll let data stage create the sql for us we need to give it the table name so this is cf fact party and that's reflected in the fact that it's party here and then we're going to click on ok and now, one thing we uh, forgot to do, we need to get columns. Because again, this is meaningless. And we need to get um, whatever comes out of the transformer must be placed into the table definitions that we've already set up. It must go into the right columns in the database. So we're going to do that. We're going to go to here, we're going to type in CF fact party, and that will load all of what we need. But again, we cannot be inserting into party ID. We're going to let that be generated automatically. And we are also going to essentially, we're going to do essentially what we did before. But we're going to fix the problem we saw before. So the way we're going to do this is get rid of is individual, and we're going to get rid of everything else except for the register number, which we are going to consider to be employee ID. So now that's it. There's nothing in here other than that, that, um, that column. So very good. Now let's go to the transformer. And the first thing we are going to do is expand or maximize this window. So the the interface here you have to you have to sort of take with a grain of salt. It's not very intuitive always. It's usually best to drag this column separator over to the left because although you can expand it this way, sometimes that's a little difficult to do and often it's just simplest to just drag this over to see everything you need. 
the, what it's essentially asking us to do is say, look, we, uh, in your, and I'm going to line these up side by side so you can cl clearly see what's going on here. So we'll go, we're going to go here, put this on the left, and then uh, separately, um, I'm going to open up Transformer and put that on the right. Okay, what this is saying is that you need to map your in Transformer, so this link, all the columns that are coming in, need to be mapped onto the in party link going out to the database. So essentially what we need to do is dr drag this over on top of this column. And now we have essentially made a transform. And we can now click on OK. And if you're wondering, okay, well wait a second, why are we only seeing registered number in the in transformer? And to answer that, you go to your CSV file and you can go to the columns here and take a look. We, we're only telling it to import that single column. Well, that may be not be what we want. So here, let's clean that up. We're going to delete this. We'll go to load. We'll go to our column definitions, sequential file definitions. And we'll go down to sequential and bring this employees.csv in. And we'll click OK. So this is, in fact, <laughs> more accurate. Um, and this is actually what we want to do. We want to map, we want to do our transform using these columns. So let's do that. So we're going to go back into the transformer now, and we're going to do exactly what we did before. But now this makes much more sense. What was the registered you know, number doing in the left? It didn't make any sense. And this is what very often what happens. You need to be sure that you are grabbing the right table definitions, that you have the right table definitions in all of the stages, and especially in the transformer stage because it matters so much. So you just direct, and notice too, it uh, status stage understands there's some sort of a mistake. Th this doesn't make any sense. So I'm going to drag this over so you can see them sort of both side by side. We're going to do exactly what we did before, drag this onto this derivation column, and, and click on yes to this prompt which says the column registered number already has a derivation defined. Do you wish to override it? Yes, we do. And now the error message goes away. What we are doing here is called a derivation. Now, yes, it is a transformation, but we're also deriving a new, not, not a new column, it's a column that we already have from our table definition, but we are deriving the one um, the registered number from s this original employee ID, because employee ID is not registered number as far as the database is concerned. So we are mapping. Now, click OK, and we should see, uh, if we go to party, we should still see the single column listed here, and essentially we're almost ready to go. We need now to set up a regex from the transformer. What happens if this doesn't go through properly? So same thing as before, we're going to right drag, we're going to go to the sequential file, we're going to put that here, and like before we're going to call this, let's just call this regex2. You may have a different naming convention, feel free to use that obviously. And put that into place, and we're going to do the same thing, we're going to re so we're going to rename this regex2. You may, for example, not like the idea I was saying before <coughs> of putting an in first, however you want to do it. And now we're going to go to regex2. We're going to go to file. We're going to select this. We're going to go into our regex parameter set. Select regex2. And remember in our sequential file, this is the step I didn't do before, uh, look at first line is column is column names that needs to be set to true and remember sequential files cannot handle nulls so we need to tell data stage what to do in the case of nulls and we'll do it like this columns here we don't need to define columns in a regex file in most cases so we're going to leave that blank but we do need to fix this regex here is not set so let's do that so regex one and again first line true format when we have null values, set that to true, to set that to null, null field value, and again, columns, notice how it's already filled in for us, that's what we want, and now we have the ability to get rejects out of this. Now, just double check, this doesn't look like a rejects link to me, so let's convert that to rejects. And let's go ahead and, compi and compile this and see if we get any errors.
and yes we do so this is the rejects is not allowed with the current setting or lack of a reject mode property so if we click on show it's uh, we need to first adjust CSV file because it doesn't know what to do with rejects so remember we have to go to reject mode continue no we want that to be output and now we can recompile that and no error messages that's great and click on run okay and you'll see that we had zero rows read in so that's clearly a problem so actually this is great because you occasionally will see this notice if we bring up the director like we've been doing up until now it will say that the status for this job is queued and you'll say hmm that's strange why does it say queued why isn't it running well, there's no reason it should not be running and if you click on the logs area logs icon you'll see down here that the last information we had was that it had finished a job and it had finished a job uh, actually quite a bit later the reason nothing is happening is because of something called workload management so if you go into your information uh, your infosphere information server and you go over to the workload management tab you'll see some actually really nice features here that in our case don't make a lot of sense so if you have a machine like we do w that just barely is squeaking by on the amount of RAM or if its CPU is maxed out in a lot of cases probably in most cases especially if you're doing massive amounts of imports into a database you do not want to run additional jobs because you can slow down um, how quickly those jobs can run. So what happens is under workload management you can set limits and you can say well if the CPU is you know 80 percent busy or less go ahead and run and indeed in our case we have 17 percent uh, usage on the CPU and so any jobs uh, that would be queued right now would, would go ahead and run. But because in the case of our RAM we're using 80 percent 87% of the RAM to do all the stuff we've been doing and because our memory usage is set to run jobs when memory is below 80 and we're above that nothing's gonna run so in a situation like that you can do something like well that's okay even if it's 100% busy go ahead and run the job and I'm gonna click on apply and that should uh, set the new value okay there it goes and now let's switch back over to the director we'll bring up the the designer at the same time and take a look we now have rows so we have four rows zero rows and if we go back to uh, if we go back to our jobs screen look it now does not say queued it says finished and this also is good take a look at what happened so we have four rows that came in from the CSV we know we had a total of five but one of the rows was rejected into our rejects file so so far so good and we know which one of those rejects we should be seeing in rejects one because we saw it before so again if you click on file and go to open and you're looking at rejects one we should see our Tom Parsons there because the employee ID was incorrect so that's great now all four of those rows are going into the transformer none of the rows went into rejects and four of the rows went into party so what we should be seeing here are the four rows inserted into the party table okay so now doing it the way we did notice that, that we don't have a good way to check the results of party we are not ex uh, we're not using a stream remember that these solid lines are stream links we're not streaming into a sequential file so we can't just open the the sequential file and check the, the results so we need to look in the database now if you don't have data studio you can go into db2 cmd and run a run this command db2 select star from party cf fact party and you'll see remember we were talking about four records we saw the four records here four rows and we're seeing those four rows here in the database now that's if you don't have data studio if you just want to do it in the command prompt but if you do have data studio you can load it here and you would see the same four records and remember too that the timestamp is automatically generated as is the party ID and that's why you see 5849 and incrementing up from there so the registered number again is the only thing we really inserted into the database and we have the correct number listed here and then the timestamp of course is the time that it was inserted so all of this looks pretty good Lastly, when I say that we have the correct number listed under registered number, 1424, who was 1424? Let's just confirm that we have the right number. To do that, we'll go back into data stage, look up our employees at CSV, find 1424, and sure enough, that is John Smith.